existence. I don't read your mail because it's happening to everybody. Okay, okay, well, 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 that's your story. So, 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 the Lord is saying, what, what are you paying? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I know that too. Look, look at this. This is cool. Jeremiah 20, verse, I believe it's 9. Yeah, Jeremiah 20, verse 9, it says, And I will cause them to eat the flesh of, of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend, and the seed and straighten his word with their enemies, and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. I'm sorry. I'm reading Jeremiah 19. Nine, as opposed to Jeremiah 29. It says, <laughs> which, that's why it made absolutely no sense. Um, it says, then I said, uh, I will not make mention of him or speak anymore in his name. This is Jeremiah said. Now, I'm, not, I'm just, you know, Jeremiah's kind of fed up. He's complaining to God, and he decided to himself, listen, I'm not going to make mention of him. I'm not speaking anymore in his name, in his honor, no more. But Jeremiah said this, but no matter what I tried to do, it says, but his, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. Jeremiah, in his, decided that because he didn't like the way God was flowing. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking in his honor. I'm not speaking in his name. I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm through. That's, that was Jeremiah's. That was Jeremiah's thought. That was Jeremiah's thought. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm through. I'm not doing this. So you can say to yourself, I'm done. I'm through. I don't care. But if you spend so much time soaking up that word and this filled you up, he, Jeremiah said, it was like, all right, shut up my bones. He says, I, I couldn't. I couldn't resist it. Even when I did want to speak about God, there was so much word in me, it just kept coming out. It just kept spewing out of me because I was filled up with overflow. So we want to have that word in us. So even when our flesh gets weary of well-doing, our spirit is like, you can get weary if you want to, but I'm so filled up, I got to get this stuff out. I got to express it. I got to let it go. And that's what we want to be. Let me see. Okay. This is good. This is good. Uh, go to John, John chapter 1, verse 14. Yeah, that's good. You're going to love this. Uh, John 1, 14. Now see, see, and how all this ties in, we talked about last week uh, and the week before how, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, so, so we know that the word has a lot to do with our faith. So we just finished talking about faith-filled words. So we know that there's something, there's a correlation between the faith and words, faith and what you say. So they're not independent of each other. It's, it's, it's a correlation, and we're going to get into it in a minute, but I want to give you this foundation of how valuable the word is as it relates to faith. See, so if I understand the word, faith comes. Look, look, so I need faith in a situation, and if I, if I delve into this word, if I'm abiding in this word, and filled up with this word, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes. So I need faith to place a demand on what I'm trying to have on earth as it is in heaven. And the way I do that is I delve into the word. 
I delve into the word, faith comes. Faith comes. So I want faith, right? All right, so let's go to John 1. Now, now John 1 is interesting uh, because what oh, is the word of faith? The word of faith. You abide in me, my words abide in me. You ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. But that's, that's John 15, 7. But John 15, 5 says, apart from him, you can do nothing. So I can't even operate faith if I'm separated from Christ. It says, I'm the vine. He is the husband man. You're cleansed through the word. It cleanses out any doubt and unbelief. John 15, 3. You're cleansed through the word. Then in, in, in verse 5 it says, apart from me you can do nothing. Then when it gets to verse 7, it says, you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask what you will, and shall be done with you. And then let's look over here at John 1. Look, look. Now, that was Jesus in John 15. But, but, but look at this. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay, so the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay, now look look at down here to uh, verse, look, look, 14. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The only begotten of the Father had Jesus. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So, 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 this is talking about Jesus. So, Jesus is the word. Hold on a second. So, if I fill myself up with faith-filled words, so I'm filling myself up with, with, with Christ himself. I'm filling myself up with Christ himself, who was there in the beginning. Who all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made. That's what the, that's what the word says. That's what the scripture says. Right, so, right, so let's, let's look at this for a second. When God's word, because this, this just said when the word, the word became flesh. So when God's word becomes flesh, you live it in every expression. See, so now Jesus became flesh. Right? Now, this is another teaching. But he became flesh, so flesh could become the word. So Jesus be, be, became what we were, so we could become what he is. So Jesus became what we were, so we could become what he is. So, so, so we want, when God's word becomes flesh, then Flesh can become God's word. So when God's word becomes flesh, flesh can become God's word. Uh, the Paul said it was living epistles. Living epistles. That means we're not just talking about something in the Bible. We're living it in every expression of our lives. But look, we're walking by faith and not by sight. We're walking by faith and not by sight. We're walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Every in every fiber of our every fiber of our being, we're 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 expressions of His word because we're so filled up with it, we are it. We're exact representations of God and His word. That's what the goal is to be exact rep rep representations of God and His word. All right, let's see what else I have for you. Look at this, look at this. So, so, so. <coughs> word becomes flesh, and flesh can become a word. And then if you look at John 14. John 14. Verse 21. Say, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him. And look, and I will manifest myself to him. So he has my commandments, he keepeth them, he loveth me, 
And then he shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So he's saying, if we keep that word, if we're so submerged in this word, then guess what? The word will be manifested to us. So look, that word goes out, and it will not turn into void, but it will accomplish that which God sent it to do. All right, so. So that word is in us. So, so, so Christ is in us to do what he was doing at the beginning. Bring things into existence in the earth realm. All things were created by him. Without him was not anything made. So the things that need to manifest in our life have to be created by him and have to be made by him. So he's saying, okay, you abide me. My words abide you. Ask what you will because I'm in you. And you're releasing my expression out of you. So you're releasing my expression, expression out of you, and it shall be done unto you. See, because, look, you keeping the word, it's, it's, it's abiding in you. You're loving God with all your heart. So it's not about you, it's about God. Then you're loved of God. So God so loved, he gives. That's what the scripture said. It says he gave. And it says, look, look. Then Jesus said, because God is so loving to you and pouring so much love on you, that's stimulating me to manifest myself to you. So now, I represent that word is in you that needs to create and perform in your life. And, and that word will be created and performed when you love God and you keep his word, that word starts to manifest around you. He said, I'll manifest myself to you. I'm the word. Jesus is the word. I'm going to manifest that which you spoke because they were faithful words. Does that make sense? Yes. I know it's a little deep, but I think that's a good note. Look at this. The scripture says this in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. It says we have this treasure in our investments. Look, so we have this treasure. We have this picture. This dream software inside of us. Uh, and what happens is, a lot of times the world corrupts it. So you already have this treasure hidden in the earth investor. You have these things that, that God has ordained to be manifest in the earth realm through your vessel. Right? So when you speak them out, you, you think you, you thought of something, but the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. So the desires that He's placing in your heart is what He wants manifested. In the earth realm. So you got this dream software on the inside of you, but, but you're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and it corrupts that software. So that the software is so corrupt that it's kind of hard for you to, to manifest it, to, to express it, um, to even speak it out half of the time. Because when it's corrupt, you start to doubt. It's corrupted. What's corrupting your files is doubt and unbelief. I saw, I, I saw a movie, uh, actually I saw, I saw one this week too, it was a movie uh, called Instinct where Anthony Hopkins, he goes into uh, the gorilla cage, opens the cage, and the other actor tells him, Cuba Gooding Jr. tells him, what you doing? He said, no, he ain't coming out. He said, when y'all first locked him up, he, he still dreamed of running through the wild. He says, but each day he was behind this cage, more and more and more, that dream started fading and fading and fading until we got to a point where it, it became a fantasy. It wasn't real no more. He didn't believe it. Now, the, the, the wild or the jungle in which he came from was a reality. He lived there. But he was in a cave for so long, what was reality became a dream. And the cave becomes his reality. Man, I can't wait to see what's next.